in. Leukemia! Holy crap, man, I hate leukemia. It's really difficult. It's so painful. I don't understand nothing. No, my heart does mean. I know, I know, I know. Okay, let's try and make it uh, un poquito más fácil. Okay, so these can present with a pancytopenia. Yeah, now even if the white count is up in one third and down in one third and normal in one third, they don't function because blasts don't function. And that's the biggest difference here is that AML and ALL have blasts on a smear. What's the best initial test? Blasts on a smear. Myelodysplasia wants to become acute leukemia. Myelodysplasia can have 1% blasts, 5% blasts, 10% blasts. At the sound of the gong, it's 20% blasts and you have acute leukemia. This is the greatest measure of prognosis. How bad are you gonna do? How likely are you to die? What percentage of blasts do you have? Now acute myelogenous and acute lymphocytic leukemia, although acute myelogenous is more common in older people and adults, and ALL is more common in children, you, my friends, you don't have to know that much about the differences in the different subtypes of leukemia. There's eight separate subtypes just of acute myelogenous leukemia. Undifferentiated myelocytic with differentiation, promyelocytic, myelomonocytic, monocytic, erythroleukemia. But it doesn't change the answer to the question that there's blasts at the beginning. Now there's older tests like myeloperoxidase myeloperoxidase at, with myelocytic leukemia or the common ALL antigen with acute lymphocytic leukemia. Oh, here we go. There's our rods with the acute myelogenous leukemia. But our ability to distinguish which one this is is really with immunophenotyping. Immunophenotyping is cell sorting. It's looking at various CD receptors, CD this, CD that, and cytogenetics. The cytogenetics is also the answer to the question, which of the following is the most important prognostic factor? Should you get bone marrow transplant after the first remission? First remission, you use chemotherapy to remove 99% of cells. That's enough to make the peripheral blood look clear of leukemic cells, but you're not anywhere near cured because when you have acute leukemia, this is about the level of burden that you have of leukemic cells, somewhere along the order of 100 billion. You see, most people don't realize that your body makes 1 billion T cells an hour every hour. That's just T cells. So leukemic burden of 100 billion, well, it's not that bad, really. I mean, one milliliter of blood, one ml of blood has five million red cells. Five million red cells. <whistles> yeah. So I'm not a big fan of having people learn a lot of specific chemotherapy for AML and ALL. Uh, I used to do that a lot. We used to like torture people and say, well, cytosine, arabinicide, cytosine, arabinicide, and donorubicin, and doxorubicin. But making you learn too much specific chemotherapy, I'm not into that anymore because you're not asked. So we actually de-chemoed step two and complex two because the most important thing is the adverse effects. They're much more concerned that you know that donorubicin causes heart damage. They're much more concerned that they know, you know that bleomycin causes lung damage or that vincristin causes neuropathy than they are about the specifics of which chemotherapy with which cancer. Now, what's different is that we know that M3 causes DIC. M3 promyositic causes DIC. What's different from the others? What's different is that M3, you add all transretinoic acid to it. What's different and unique? What's different and unique? What gives me the answers that I seek? And it's different and unique. All transretinoic acid. Yeah, what you don't use on your acne, you can use on your leukemia. What's different and unique is that with ALL, we have to give chemotherapy 
intrathecal chemotherapy. We deliver chemotherapy into the spinal fluid. What's different and unique? Intrathecal chemotherapy, where it'll recur in the spine and in the testicles. What's different and unique? Yeah, myeloproxidase and hour rods and nonspecific esterase with AML, the common ALL antigen. Immunophenotyping, my friends. Immunophenotyping, cell sorters. What sort of CD receptors do we have? What's the best initial test? Smear for blasts. What's the most accurate test? Immunophenotyping and cell sorting. What's the best initial therapy? Chemotherapy and adding all transretinoic acid for M3. What's the most effective therapy? Bone marrow transplant. Which of the following is the greatest prognostic indicator? Cytogenetics, translocations, monosomies, trisomies, fractured chromosomes. There's the questions for you for acute leukemia. Now, myelodysplasia wants to become leukemia. Cervical dysplasia wants to become cervical cancer. Dysplastic polyps want to become colon cancer. Myelodysplasia is a hard disorder for people to learn because there is no one unique identifying feature. Pancytopenia? Well, lots of things like pancytopenia. Lupus, B12, folate, alcohol, lots of infections, HIV, CMV, hepatitis B and C. You're older and tired. Well, a lot of people are older and tired. Oh, well, you have a high MCV. Well, this is part of the reason that you got to make sure the B12 and folate level are normal because it can look like myelodysplasia. That's why, okay, because it can be looking a little megaloblastic. Most people don't get to leukemia. They fade away by bleeding from the low platelets or infection from the low white count or dysfunctional white cells. The white cells don't work. So myelodysplasia and acute leukemia have a certain relationship. But the thing is, is that myelodysplasia is nearly impossible to cure because you're too old to get transplanted. Most of these people are above the age of 70 and allogeneic transplants can only happen to what age? Allogeneic transplants under the age of 50 autologous stem cell transplants under the age of 70, but most of these patients are too old to be transplanted. You bleed, you get infected, you get a pancytopenia, high MCG, you fade away, you got this funky bilobed, this funny bilobed neutrophil called a pelger Ewitt cell two lobes to it, this funny bilobe nucleic neutrophil called a pelger Ewitt cell. What's unique on a smear? The answer is it's not that much unique from myelodysplastic syndrome. Older, pancytopenic, anemic, needs transfusions, and the chemotherapy. We have some unique chemotherapies, azacitidine, or the lenalidomide, thalidomide, lenalidomide, thalidomide, and these are for people who have a 5Q. See, a 5Q deletion, that's a piece of a chromosome. You know, you might say, isn't that funny that it gives a better prognosis? How can that 5Q, what do you mean it gives a better prognosis? Because you have something to treat. You have something to sink your teeth into. See, part of the reason that myelodysplasia is harder to cure is because it's slower and more chronic hard to get rid of that. AML and ALL are a disaster. Yeah, promyelocytic leukemia will kill you in six weeks. But it's so fast moving that you can actually cure it. How do you know whether to just give more chemo? I cleared the blood by getting rid of 99.9% .9 of the cells. I clear the blood by getting rid of 99% less. When you get rid of almost all the cells, the immune system takes over and gets rid of the rest of them. Myelodysplastic syndrome, it ends not with a bang, but with a whimper, and you fade away. Now, we have some good news about chronic leukemias. Chronic leukemias are called chronic because they kill you much slower, 
You can go on with them for years. Matter of fact, with stage zero, uh, which is just a high white count with CLL, or stage one, which is positive lymph nodes, on average, the survival of those stages is 10 to 12 years, man. It goes on forever. And the other great news about CML is that you have a high white count of all neutrophils and the treatment doesn't cure you. The only way to cure you is with a bone marrow transplant. But we have therapy, the tyrosine kinase inhibitors, imatinib, desatinib, nilotinib, tyrosine kinase inhibitors, uh, imatinib, desatinib, nilotinib, and the tyrosine kinase inhibitors make this a 95% controllable disease because it just suppresses the product of the Philadelphia chromosome. The LAP score is old stuff. We don't bother with that anymore. We do a PCR for the BCR able. The PCR for the BCR able. We used to do leukocyte alkaline phosphatase scores, but uh, that was because we couldn't do them on a peripheral blood. The LAP score was used because we knew that high white counts, normal white cells make alkaline phosphatase. So we used to say, well, if you have a low alkaline phosphatase, we'll marrow you for the Philadelphia chromosome. We'll marrow you for the 922 translocation. We'll marrow you for the Philadelphia chromosome, 922 translocation, the BCR able. I just said the same thing in three different ways. BCR able, Philadelphia chromosome, 922 translocation. But now we just do it on peripheral blood. Now we just do it on peripheral blood. Use tyrosine kinase inhibitors. In CML, why is everybody itchy? In polycythemia vera, why is everybody itchy? In CML and polycythemia vera, why are they itchy? Because basophils release histamine, and people are itchy. Well, this may seem rather rapid for all leukemias, doesn't it? Well, um, you can make an entire career out of just acute lymphocytic leukemia, acute myelogenous leukemia. And a bone marrow transplant attending at Sloan Kettering does one of them. But for the level that you need to know for step two and complex two, the level you need to know for your examination is that you just need to know when to refer. You need to know big things like intrathecal chemotherapy for ALL and all transretinoic acid for M3 per myelocytic leukemia. You need to know that LAP scores out because you can do the PCR for BCR able so you know who to refer for chemotherapy for CML. To know who to refer for the high white count that's all lymphocytes. To know who to refer because when you have a big spleen, you need therapy. When you have a anemia, you need therapy. And when you have low platelets, you need therapy. You need therapy because those are the ones that get treated, especially anemia and low platelets. Those are the people who get fluid arabine, lowers mortality, and rituximab for the CD50, uh, CD20 positive, rituximab, and maybe, maybe not the cyclophosphamide. Doesn't this start to look like lymphoma management? You know why it looks like lymphoma management? Because CLL is really kind of a liquidy lymphoma. And lymphoma is kind of a solid CLL. So you need to know who to refer. Who to refer for chemotherapy. Rituximab, the anti-CD20 drug, we use it in lymphoma. We use it in rheumatoid arthritis. We use it sometimes in ITP, cyclophosphamide. Now, if you had anemia, is it better for you to have anemia from autoimmune hemolysis, because CLL gives autoimmune hemolysis, or from stage three CLL, which is better for you? Well, autoimmune hemolysis, I can get better with steroids in six hours. But stage three CLL, ooh, by the time you get to these levels of CLL, 
oh, one or two years survival. So here's the number one screw up for CLL. It won't be that you fail to recognize it. It's not most likely diagnosis. Old guy with a white count to have 70 and 80 and 100,000, it's all lymphocytes, normal appearing lymphocytes, normal appearing lymphocytes, don't expect to see smudge cells. Smudge cells are there sometime because they are basically squeezed lymphocyte nuclei. Cell sorter, immunophenotyping. Cell sorter, immunophenotyping, immunotyping, immune no typing to tell what type of leukemia you have the most common screw up in CLL is missing the anemia and the thrombocytopenia and saying for everybody with CLL don't treat it that is the most common wrong answer the most common wrong answer for CLL is to say You've got the anemia, the low platelets off in the big spleen, and you say, in your mind, you got told, people with CLL don't need therapy, just wait. Mm -mm. Advanced stage disease needs therapy. Advanced stage disease needs therapy. And chlorambucil is just for old guys when you want to just bring the white count down like a chemical shave. Chlorambucil does not increase survival. Chlorambucil brings the white count down. Chlorambucil can be used in people who are too old and fragile for cyclophosphamide and fludarabine, but chlorambucil does not lower mortality. Smudge cells are seen on the smear. Don't forget to treat advanced stage disease. Advanced stage disease gets treated with CLL. Advanced stage disease gets treated with CLL. Advanced stage disease, alemtuzumab. What a long name is that? Anti-CD52. Alemtuzumab. Anti-CD52 drug. Alemtuzumab can be used to knock off the CLL. There's not much to know about CLL. High white count, all lymphocytes, normal appearing cells, can cause autoimmune hemolysis, can cause autoimmune thrombocytopenia. If that happens, give them steroids. If it's advanced disease here, how will you know? It'll be Coombs negative and the marrow will be relatively empty. Advanced stage disease gets chemo. Autoimmune hemolysis and thrombocytopenia just gets steroids. Last one, hairy cell leukemia. TRAP is out, pancytopenia. TRAP, tartrate resistant phos acid phosphatase is out. Pancytopenia, dry tap, old guy, big spleen, dry tap, old guy, big spleen, dry tap, pancytopenia, and of course you see hairy cells. The treatment hasn't changed. It was cladribine 25 years ago and pentostatin, and it's cladribine and pentostatin now. TRAP, tartrate resistant acid phosphatase is out. Immunophenotyping, cell sorter. CD11, CD. CD stands for cluster of differentiation. That's how we tell these apart. So if in medical school they made you learn all sorts of stuff like myeloproxidase for the myelocytic leukemia and esterase and hour rods and all this smear stuff, <sighs> not anymore. If they made a big thing about leukocyte alkaline phosphatase being low in CML, not anymore. Tartrate resistant acid phosphatase for hairy cell trap, not anymore. Immunophenotyping. What's the CD type? Do you have CD11s here? What's the CD type? Dry tap, pancytopenia, big spleen, cladribine. And remember, there's two other things. When you're giving chemotherapy for people with leukemia or lymphoma, universally, we like to use rasburicase to prevent tumor lysis syndrome. It's a uric ACE to prevent the tumor lysis uric acid. Next, when you see a white count that's really, really high, like above 100,000 white cells, that clogs up stuff and makes you short of breath and makes you visual disturbance and can't think straight leukostasis. That's any type of person that has a super high 
leukostasis, and that's any person that has a really high white count that clogs it up. How come this happens, leukostasis, with AML and CML, but doesn't happen with CLL? This happens with neutrophil problems. How come it doesn't happen with lymphocyte problems? It happens with the blasts. It happens with the neutrophils. But it doesn't happen with CLL, the lymphocytic leukemia. It doesn't clog up your brain. I can't think straight. It doesn't clog up your lungs, the lymphocytes. I can't breathe straight. But with AML and ALL and CML, with these neutrophil problems and these lymphocyte problems, white count above 100,000? I can't think. I can't see. I can't breathe. I can't think. I can't see. I can't breathe. And the answer is because they're physically larger. Blasts are large. They clog stuff up. And here, the management is leukapheresis. Scoop off the leukocytes. Leukapheresis, scoop off the white cells. Leukapheresis, remove the white cells with leukapheresis. Remove the white cells, the neutrophils, the blasts. Remove the white cells. Whereas Buracase prevents tumor lysis syndrome. Alemtuzumab anti-CD52 for CLL. Don't mistake advanced disease and say just do nothing because it's CLL. No, advanced disease gets chemotherapy. Don't say tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. Say immunophenotyping. Trap is out. Don't say lap and trap. Bap, schmap say immunophenotyping and cell sorters. The amount you need to know about acute leukemias, chronic leukemias, not that much for you. Concentrate on the adverse effects of medications and you'll be awesome. See you soon.